Do fish ponds need a filter? G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and you might like to check out my website, ozponds.com. I do get asked a fair bit if it's possible to have a fish pond without a filter and a pump. And my answer is, of course. Ponds in nature don't have pumps or traditional filters, and they still have fish. But it does depend on your expectations. Do you want crystal clear water, low maintenance, open water that you can see the fish, or lots of plants? So let's first talk about why most people choose to have a filter, and then how you could design a pond to not need one. There's pretty much two main reasons that we add a filter to a pond, or an aquarium for that matter. Number one, to remove or capture solid materials like fish waste, uneaten food, and decomposing organic material, basically just dead plants. Number two, and this is far more important, to grow bacteria that will create a safe environment for the fish or any other aquatic animals living inside the pond. If you aren't sure what I mean, here's the quick version. The fish produce ammonia. Ammonia is very bad for fish. The bacteria convert ammonia into nitrite. Nitrite is still bad for fish. Other bacteria then convert nitrite into nitrate, which isn't so bad for fish. This is a process called the nitrogen cycle, and it's a very important part of fish keeping. If you want, you can learn more about it on my website or just Google the nitrogen cycle in a pond or an aquarium and you'll get tons of results. You can totally complete the cycle by removing the nitrate. I've talked more in detail on that in other videos, but just quickly, there are three main ways to remove nitrate, plants, water changes or bacteria that thrive in low oxygen environments. So let's just talk about some common types of filters and how they remove solid materials and provide home for the bacteria. And then we can look at how we can try and achieve similar results without the need for a filter and a pump. First, the humble sponge filter. A sponge filter uses air to displace water. As the air and water is pushed out the top tube, new water moves in through the sponges to replace it. The sponges collect fine sediments that are inside the water column and the sponges also grow bacteria on them. Now I should also mention that the bacteria that are so important grow on all wet surfaces. In this small shrimp aquarium they're on the glass, the plants, the heater and of course the sponges. When you move water through surfaces that are colonised by the bacteria you get better results as the bacteria can just grab the ammonia straight from the water and start processing it. So as we circulate the water through the aquarium or pond, we're allowing the bacteria to get access to all the water and therefore all the ammonia. This one's a filter fountain box. The pump sits inside and pulls water in. The inside is filled with media that provides wet surfaces for the bacteria and I would guess there are sponges, although I don't see them in this picture. Another type of filter is a bog filter or an aquaponic filter, and it has the same goal with the added bonus of plants. Bog filters are my personal favourite, as they're easy to build yourself and can be scaled to suit any size pond. The water is pumped up into the base of the bog. The bog is filled with rock and pebble to provide surface area for the bacteria, it has a slow flow which allows small solid materials to accumulate in the bottom of the bog. And of course there are lots of other types of filters, but the idea is always the same. Capture solids and move water through wet surfaces that are colonised by good bacteria. So how can we have a pond without a filter? The answer of course is plants. Almost all aquatic plants prefer to consume ammonia over nitrate. This means that in a pond with lots of aquatic plants, the amount of ammonia that needs to be processed by bacteria is reduced. Also, the plants themselves will also increase the overall wet surface area and therefore provide ample area for the bacteria to grow on. 
You want to aim for a diverse range of plants, some submerged, some floaters and some marginals. You also want to try and have plants that are most active at different times of year. That way there is constantly something growing and consuming ammonia. In a planted pond with no filter, the pond itself is the filter and will therefore collect sediments. Over time the sediments will build up. In a small pond like this, it's very easy to net out some of that accumulation. If constructing a larger pond, you might want to make it extra deep to allow for the buildup of sediments over time. Bacteria and other organisms will consume some of the sedimentation, but without aeration and circulation, it will build up faster than it will in a well aerated and circulated pond. Plants are often sold as oxygenators, and this is kind of true, as they'll add oxygen to the water during daylight hours, but at night they won't. This can potentially be a problem, as the bacteria and fish both need oxygen. To combat this, you want to not overstock your pond. I always think you shouldn't anyway, but in a pond with no movement and oxygen, it's even more important. You'll also want to remove any dead or dying plant material to help prevent too much sedimentation occurring too quickly. So as you can see, it's quite possible to create a fish pond without the need of a traditional filter, pump or aeration. At the end of the day, it comes down to what is available to you and what type of pond you'd like to create. I like to incorporate plants, circulation, aeration and bog filters in my ponds. I like the benefits I get from the movement of water. I love the benefits of bog filtration and I like being able to have lots of open water area to view the fish. That's just my preference. As always, if you want to see how any of my ponds were built or the cheap filters I've put together over the years, you can find all that by scrolling through the backlog of videos. Anyway, I hope this video gave you some ideas. If it did, feel free to hit the old thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.